Ever since I posted this photo, I've been getting a ton of questions about my setup. Now, I still wanna do a more complete review after I shoot a few more projects with it, but to answer some of the initial rig questions, here's a quick breakdown of my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. At the center of this rig, of course, is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Now, it's a bit rare to see these cameras in their birthday suit, but believe it or not, you actually can use this camera straight out of the box if you have a micro four thirds lens handy. When I first picked this camera up, I actually got one of those Mikey Cine lenses, popped a high speed SD card in this, and it was actually really nice to use. However, there are three main accessories that I wanted to add to this camera to make it even more customized for me. First of all, a solid state drive. Second, a bigger battery. And third, a follow focus system. To start the build, I decided to add a full cage from Tilta in Tilta Gray. There's a lot of options out there from half cages to cheese plates, but for me, I figured a full cage would give me the most flexibility in the future. I chose the Tilta basic kit, which came with a top handle, SSD holder, and very importantly, a secured USB-C and HDMI connector. This makes sure that you don't accidentally unplug your SSD and potentially corrupt your files. Once we've got the cage secured, we can fulfill my first request, which was an SSD. This is beneficial for two reasons for me. First, you can get one terabyte of memory for about half the price of what that would be on an SD card. And don't even get me started on CFast cards. Secondly, the workflow of shooting on an SSD is so streamlined. As soon as I'm done shooting, I can unplug the SSD from my camera and then straight into my computer and edit right off of that. No need to wait to transfer files anymore. It's honestly one of my favorite features of this camera. Next up, I added a Tilta side focus handle type two. This filled my other two needs of a bigger battery and a follow focus. This side focus handle has a slot for an F970 battery built in, as well as a focus wheel that can connect to a Tilta Nucleus Nano wireless follow focus, which is something that I already had from a previous build. Let's get started with the battery, which is the Power Extra Multifunctional Battery Pack Power Bank. The main feature you're looking for is DC out at 7.4 volts. This is enough to power the camera via the battery port only, so you're gonna wanna pick up a DC to LP6 dummy battery cable. This also means that you don't have to hunt for that 12 volt micro DC cable that for some reason does not come with the side focus handle. There are two other things that I love about this battery. First of all, it's $18 US for 6,600 milliamp hours. Now I'm not the best at conversion, so feel free to correct me, but at 7.4 volts, that's pretty close to the equivalent of a 50 watt hour V-mount. So $18 for that is a pretty great deal when you look at some of the other options. The second reason I love this battery is because not only does it have a DC out, but it also has USB out, which means that you can use your extra batteries to power some of your USB devices in a pinch. Next, let's talk about the handle itself. As I mentioned, this is the Type 2. There are actually three different versions with varying connection types on the Tilta website. Type 1 has a proprietary connection that only works with Tilta cages. Type 3 is a screw-in solution with locating pins. I ended up going with Type 2 because of the rosette connection. This allows me to change the angle of the handle, depending on the situation. To connect this to the cage, I opted to actually go from rosette to NATO. I added a NATO rail connection to the side of my Tilta cage and then connected a NATO to rosette connector to that. So it adds a little bit of distance to the handle, but it's not too much that it's uncomfortable. Plus, it gives me the ability to quickly switch the handle between the cage and my Ronin S. Finally, let's talk about the lens elements. I know I'm gonna catch some heat for this, but I'm actually using a Comlight Speed Booster. Why? Well, because I got it for $100 US. So I figured it'd be worth a shot, and so far, honestly, it's working great for my purposes. We can talk more in my full first impressions review, but let me just say that while it's not perfect, it's good enough. Attached to the Speed Booster is the 15 millimeter rod attachment that comes with the Nucleus Nano. This allows me to mount the follow focus motor to the lens. Speaking of the lens itself, of course, I've got all this set up on the Sigma 18-35, which is actually the only lens that I own for this camera at the moment. 
and honestly, I haven't struggled at all using only it so far. Finally, in front of the lens, I'm running a combination circular polarizer variable ND from KNF Concept. Again, I could do a whole review just on this unit alone, but let me just say that I really like it. Sometimes it's not quite enough ND, especially when it's super bright outside and I wanna shoot it like 1.8, but it gets pretty close. Other than that, I usually have my Rode Wireless Go set mounted right onto the camera cage so that I have it ready to go whenever I need it. I've also got a little five inch monitor as well that I throw on the top handle when I need it, but I really can't wait for Tilted to release that tilting screen mod that they're supposed to be coming out with because I just hate adding the extra weight of the monitor. So there you have it my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K rig, for now. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. It'll either inspire another video or I'll just give you a quick answer if there is one. But anyways, thanks for watching.